Okay. <clears throat> it is time. We return. We once again enter the survival horror. That is downpour. Oh yeah, do we even get to read our letter? Find the police patrol dispatcher. Stop the patrol cars. Set all the birds free. The stuff that we've already done. I guess we don't. Even though Howard the Mailman gives us the letter and Murphy rips it up and Howard just already has a replacement one right there in his bag. Just their their way of showing like reality is does not function the way you would expect it to here. Do you get it? It's Silent Hill. We don't even get to keep the letter. We don't get to read it. Nothing. debating if I wanted to even do this. But it's one of the only side quests that I kind of like. The movie theater. Special event tonight. Streamers smash down. From the award-winning writer... Horror from Czech Republic. That's where Vatra Games is based. Me. Fresh food is good. Samaritan. Finest quality for you. This is your favorite part of this game, Big No-No? It's at least one of the more, like, satisfying bits of side questing in the game. Compared to a lot of the other side quests, I, I like this one. Them tasty burgers. How did that ice cream not melt? All has to be fake food. Silent Hill has different rules for ice cream. Just like Bobby told us.
There it is. Film reel. Like, I feel like there's item that's here on hard mode. Usually forget about that film reel. Aid kit. Bulbs missing. Thanks, Murphy. We'll have to find a bulb for the projector, as well as film. There's the other one. So dark back here. Get in here without the keypad. Hello. Things making sounds. that I've been over here. I think that's what will trigger things being in that other building. Because I'm pretty sure that's where you wind up getting the, uh, the bulb. Hard mode. It's been a while since I've done a lot of these side quests in general. I mean, it's been a little over a year since I played this game at all. And definitely much longer since I've done the side quests, because I almost never bother with these. And on the one hand, I kind of like having stuff in these games that I can still do, that I don't just immediately know what to go and do. Oh, look at the poster. Good poison. That was uh, the movie in the theater in Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Here's the mother. But yeah. Here it is. Can't even exit from any of the doors. I know this should be the side of the building that's the exit. All right, does that make stuff appear? Uh, this area now. That's still locked. Anything else up there? But yeah, it's kind of nice having certain things in these games where I'm like, okay, I don't know the solution right away. I can still sort of run around and do stuff, because by this point I've done just about everything else in these games there is to do. It's mostly just these ones that I don't like very much, so I don't play as often. That I still have uh, these kind of situations. I'm like, man, I know you got to leave and go get the light bulbs from some other building. 
but it's been long enough that since I've done all this on hard mode, uh, then I start thinking about the rest of it. How just generally unrewarding so many of the side quests and stuff in this game are. It's really demotivating. It really makes me not want to play a lot of sections of this game out. Hey, what's up, Starshine? First aid. Shovel. I think there is another dig spot nearby. I feel like that shovel is one of the ones you pick up. For the uh, speedrun route. Like, I remember going out of my way for that shovel for stuff in the past. Maybe not. Dirty lady patrol cars? Yeah. They're out here. They are out here and looking. Alright, so right here at the bottom. section of the map. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you can go and look at from here. Some exploring. There's a weeping bat under the bridge. And here is Patrick Napier's van. Security Systems, P. Napier. Come on, pick it up. This looks like one of those weird paintings. Give me that shotgun. You don't see me. Not here. Dirty lady cops. Here's the item juggling that has to go on, just to select which two weapons I want to keep. Like, alright, I want the shotgun and the axe, and I want to drop the handgun, but, yeah. You can't just, like, go into a menu and equip or unequip or whatever, you gotta do that whole juggling act anytime you want to switch out weapons like that. Any connection between the monsters in Silent Hill and Murphy, or is it just, hi, I'm a monster, roar? It's really, really just kind of simple. There's not a whole lot of explanation to it. Like, the enemies themselves are very straightforward. They're made to look like prisoners. Shirtless, buff, tattooed prisoner dudes with things on their faces. Um, and dirty ladies with sharp teeth and claws. The weeping bats, which there was a little bit of backstory that we read at that area of the game that was kind of explaining the whole... I guess I'll just keep the gun. Just kind of explaining the whole idea of like where the weeping bat name came from, that they felt imprisoned, or that they were viewed as being imprisoned. There's a lot of very on the nose symbolism and imagery sort of representing imprisonment. 
Just because, uh, yeah, Murphy's a prisoner. That's it. It's not super deep. And that's kind of the problem with a lot of it. The enemy designs, for the most part, are really straightforward. And uh, a lot of the symbolism that's given in environment and in notes and in stuff like that is all very, very shallow, very surface level for the sake of kind of piecing together what it means. And even then, so Looks much of the like story... This was a special place to somebody. Oh, special place. Do you get it? Remember Silent Hill 2? Hey, what's up, Xanix? I don't know. I'm trying... I'm sorry. I'm trying not to be too negative towards the game. I'm just hitting that point where, like, almost nine hours playing it. So now it's, like, early in the morning for me. Kind of just now starting to feel tired again. And I'm realizing, oh, right, this game is kind of annoying to me to go through and play. I'm remembering. Gentlemen and Fox Funeral Services, funeral announcement. You are cordially invited to attend the funeral for... Allison Elaine Weirden, 1923 to 1999. Memorial services will be conducted at 11 a.m. Tuesday morning, November 9th, 1999. At the Perkins Funeral Home, followed by graveside services at Monroe Cemetery, 1 p.m. Are we at least halfway or past halfway through? Uh, not quite. You can actually see. 39%. Game actually keeps track of how much of the game you are you are through. All right, move on I'm out of this side quest house. Played this on PS3 emulator a while back and worked surprisingly well. Nice, Kaz. I've been hearing that uh, PS3 emulation's gotten a lot better. I know Techie's planning on doing a run of this on PS3 emulation sometime soon, TM. But we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I've been hearing it's uh, it's gotten a lot better. Oh, a burb. Poor little guy. Now we get another grass cutscene. Oh, look at that. Remember the grass? Remember the flowers? Remember when Murphy was in that grass and flowers? At least his arm was. Sure was good times. Remember being free? Remember freedom? The time before prison? Remember Gladiator? Remember the movie Gladiator? Remember the TV show American Gladiators? Just go off on a tangent. <clears throat> Sorry. Distracting myself from downpour. Oh, another one of the uh, sewer shortcut areas. All this will... If you do that side quest, you can open all this up.
just to have a way to get, you know, from one side of the town to the other a little bit faster. But you still have to run through a bunch of the sewers or the subways, whatever, to get there. So most of the time, it's not even really worth doing by the time you finish that side quest. Don't you dance at me. Get out of here. I actually see an area that we're going to get to later right here. So later on, this will actually be open. We'll have to come back around through here and get back to the streets up this ladder. For now, nothing here. It's all blocked off. Was that fuck or ah? Or nah? Neither. If Murphy does not address them by their name, then we'll just assume that uh, they're just random assholes. Nub, Resident Evil's coming to De Dead by Daylight today. Are you ready to get chased by Nemi through Midwitch? Or chase people as Pyramid Head through RPD? Yeah. No, I can't wait. I played a little bit of the uh, Resident Evil stuff when they were doing the PTB. Not really enough to get a feel for the killer or anything like that. The map looks nice. I feel like similar to Midwitch, it's going to be, wow, this is really nice and accurate to the game and horrible to play on. In terms of like an actual Dead by Daylight map. But um, I don't know. We'll... We'll see how, uh, how it works out. Okay. Enough backtracking for now. Hey, Khalid. If they're going to remake one of the Silent Hills, what would I want it to be? As long as Konami's got it, I really don't want him doing anything. I, I guess if they were going to remake any of them, I'd want to see Silent Hill 1 remade more than anything else. Not, not Shattered Memories. That doesn't count. Like an actual true to the original remake. We're assuming that that would be a thing that Konami could somehow pull off. Uh, Sitting Cool, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. I don't want that. Why can't you jack cars? Murphy said he could hotwire. Uh, that was answered in the conversation with DJ Ricky Bobby. Said that he could hotwire stuff. Ricky Bobby said that won't work. This town's got rules you gotta follow. You gotta solve puzzles to do everything. Otherwise, nothing works. 
reality doesn't work right. No, save me, bird. Save me from the dirty lady brigade. With a cutscene. Dirty Lady Brigade. Murphy, aim at the one that's attacking you. There you go. Bonk. Look at that downpour, am I right? I mean, sometimes it rains. Every once in a while, it's like, hey, look, an actual downpour. Downpouring in the game. Rare, but it happens. You can genuinely tell Akira had absolutely nothing to do with this. Yeah. Yep, and it's definitely not... Daniel Leek's uh, best work either. Real shame. Alright. Already been to the end of the bridge. Dirty Lady Patrol. game was made by a Czech studio. On behalf of all Czech people, I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize for everybody else. I mean, Vatra closed down after this, so uh, that doesn't that doesn't say anything. I don't know what will. <laughs> Not your fault, exactly. Back towards the theater. All right. Anytime you deal with dirty lady cops, there's always a second patrol on the way. Because they radioed it uh, into headquarters, into dirty lady headquarters. Letting the other ones know. Go in here, because I think there is just... There's a side quest. Also, more monster art paintings. Weeping Bat. So we've seen paintings for... The Screamers, for the Weeping Bats, and for the Prisoners. Free shotgun ammo. Oh, the replacement bulb. This is where you get the bulb for the uh, theater. So now, if you wanted to backtrack all the way to the theater to do that side quest... You could do that. But boy... I don't feel like doing that. Gotta tell ya.
Looks like Vatra went under after this game came out. Yeah, that's what I, like, just, just said, Mortflame. Like a moment ago. But yeah, that is what happened. They made this, and then they made a patch for this, and then that was it. They did make a... Um, there was another game before Downpour. It was... Um, Bionic Commando? No, something... It was a digital-only game. And uh, I remember... I want to say Enigma. Somebody on, on Team Silent on Twitch had looked into it a little bit more. Said that it had, like, downpour assets and stuff like that. Russian attack. That was it, Starwind. Thank you. Come on, grab the painting. Grab the painting. Grab, grab it. This looks like one of those weird paintings. You are an absolute fucking champion. Murphy Pendleton, do you have any idea how hard it is to get that painting without messing around with all the other prompts? I'm not even going to do that fucking side quest. I'm just happy I got it. But yeah, it was like a digital-only version, newer version for Russian Attack. Oh god, Maxi made the Duke emote. From when he paused it on the face the other night. That is amazing. Glad that's already an emote. Alright. Got us some ammo. Running around with a couple of guns. Another day in America. I think there was some optional notes and stuff that you can find around here. There's also another place where if you kept a shovel, dig up another artifact back here. Here we go. I'm looking for this jury finds Patrick Napier guilty of first degree. Took a jury only four hours of deliberation to return a guilty verdict against Patrick Napier at the Brams Courthouse this afternoon. Napier, 42, a convicted child molester and registered sex offender, had been accused of abducting, sexually assaulting, and murdering Daniel Stevens, an eight-year-old boy, a uh, local boy whose parents had reported him missing in January of last year. This is a hollow victory at best, District Attorney Theodore Adams told reporters outside the courthouse after the verdict had been handed down. Yes, we got a sick and dangerous predator off the streets and behind bars for good. On the other hand, none of this can return a promising young boy to the arms of his grieving parents. Napier's guilty verdict comes with a mandatory life without parole sentence. He was immediately remanded to Ryle State Prison by Sheriff's deputies following the verdict where he will be placed in protective custody and begin serving his sentence in complete isolation from other prisoners. So, stuff like this is, is interesting to me. In, in the reality of Downpour, in, in the overall Hello. story, are we seeing it's this as Napier killing someone other than Charlie? Or is this supposed to be referencing Charlie directly, but just changing the name? There's a lot of different ways to kind of look at it. And none of the endings really confirm it, or either way. Uh, Three Dog. Yo, with the big 41 months of support. Thank you so much, man. Hope you're doing well. What's going on, Aged Whale? Glad to see you back to streaming. Hope you are doing well and you are happy. I'm doing much, much better than I was for a long time, so it's been nice coming back to uh to streaming and getting back to Silent Hill. Dr. Grimm, I'm doing my best. If you want to 
cover your theories on Downpour, you are welcome to do your own in-depth stream. But man, that's like all you've talked about all stream. I swear to God, if I see the word Wishborn in chat one more time. <laughs> Sounds like a tabletop RPG race that you made up just to call manifestations something other than what they are. But, as I said, there's no... The endings are so all over the place. There's no cohesive narrative or plot for Silent Hill Downpour. And just every step of the way saying, like, Charlie doesn't exist, Murphy doesn't exist, everyone is wishborn. <laughs> sure, that's the thing. Why not? Like, there's no arguing it one way or the other. Like, the plot is nonsensical. It... It could very well be that. There's plenty of things that are mentioned and situations in the game that can be interpreted in ways where that is absolutely the case. But then there's stuff to contradict it as well. Nothing really makes sense at the end of the day for this game. The game doesn't exist. Sadly, it does. If only this game was Wishborn. Whoever Wishborned Downpour into existence. Yes. May I help you? I'm Murphy Pendleton. I received this letter today, but I think there's been a mistake. Ah, oh, yes. Mr. Pendleton. We've been expecting you. You were the only family we were able to locate. Your presence is very welcome family no uh that can't be uh, i mean bless you child i understand this must be very confusing for you we've checked the records carefully and i assure you there's no mistake please come in don't even ask me about the nun she's definitely a wishborn 100 percent a wishborn Big no-no, thank you for continuing the gift sub what that you got hell? from Blatt. Appreciate the continued support. Thank you. He died peacefully and is finally at rest. For that, at least, we can thank the Lord for his mercy. He didn't leave much behind, but his few personal effects are yours to claim. What happened here? Was there an earthquake? I'll meet you in the morgue in the East Wing, when you're ready. In the meantime, please feel free to look around. We're pleased that the good Lord has allowed us to carry out his work here at St. Maria's. I'm sure you'll find your visit enlightening. Hey, let's take all the cults away from the video games. But at the same time, we need a religious, you know, speaking culty kind of sounding lady to, to give us a sort of vaguely masked exposition. So, here's a nun. Here's a nun just kind of to fill that role. Not really have more to do in the story. Feel free to look around. There's nothing to look at, and it's all dilapidated. Yeah. Pretty much. Feel free to look around. It all looks like this. Where'd she go? Never played this one? Is he finishing? Yes. Oh, I'm definitely finishing it. We're nowhere near the end. It's still a long, long way away. But we will finish the video game all in one stream, as is tradition. 
So wait. St. Maria's Church and Orphanage. Our evacuation plan. Holy shit. Level best. Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you had a great stream. The medium. Hope you were enjoying your uh, your playthrough. Enjoying your stream. Hope you're having a good morning. You guys go check out Level Best. Drop them a follow. Super talented. Extremely funny. Extremely entertaining. <laughs> that scared me. It's a good alert. Got a good scare out of you. But what's up, level? We're going Just through. Find something to smash it with. We're playing some Silent Hill Downpour. I'm doing my best to uh, talk about the game, cover a lot of stuff. But I'm also at. We're just past the nine hour mark. I'm kind of at that point where I'm remembering. Man, I don't like this game. <laughs> it took it a little while to set in. It took it a little bit to set in. When I very first started playing and kind of going through the first areas again, it had been a little over a year or so since I played it. So I'm like, okay, it's it's downpour. It's not that bad. But once you start getting into the, the wandering the town segments and kind of getting from place to place, I'm just like, god damn. Get it? It's a silhouette of Murphy violently murdering Patrick Napier. The thing we did in the very first moments of the game. I just feel like every aspect of this game, every time it tries to do something that's like clever or symbolic or metaphorical and like I, I just find myself constantly just being like, do you get it? Do you get it? This is the meaning. The book's talking about prison. The thing is symbolizing prisoners. We're watching Mur Murphy murder a man. And I don't know. It's it's hard to like try to sit down and pick apart intricacies and visuals and talk about things in depth the same way I can with like Silent Hill 2 or Silent Hill 3 where there actually is like stuff to talk about. Things that are not blatant or vague to the point of not mattering. What could have done this? What could have done this? Who did Murphy murder? Killed a man named Patrick Napier. A known... Look, it's a fake out. She's not really there. He killed uh, a man known as Patrick Napier, who's a convicted child molester and murderer who molested and murdered Murphy's son, Charlie. So Murphy wanted revenge got arrested on purpose, and killed that man. Hey there. Unless he didn't, because the endings in the story of this here? game don't really matter. Sister said we're not supposed to talk to strangers. Oh. It's just you. What's your name? Hey. Maybe, uh... Maybe you could unlock this door. Think you could do that for me? Uh, it's a pretty cool car you got there. You like cars? 
Yeah, my little boy. He used to play with cars just like that. You kind of remind me of him. Is he dead? Yeah. Did you kill him? What? No, of course not. Why would you say something like that? Because she said you're the boogeyman. Boogeyman? What are you talking about? Who said that? She did. She told me all about you. Why is she crying? Who is she? I don't know. Just some girl. She's always sad, but she knows things. What kind of things? Things about the boogeyman. Look, I won't lie to you. Grown-ups tell kids there's no such thing as monsters, that the boogeyman's just make-believe, and there's nothing hiding under their beds. But that's a lie, because I've seen him. And I have a feeling you have, too. But I'm not one of them. I'm not the boogeyman. Now, what do you say we get out of here, all three of us? Do you know the rhyme? What rhyme? She told me there's a secret rhyme that makes the boogeyman go away. If you say it fast enough, he can't hurt you. Do you know it? No. But if there's a rhyme that can do that, I sure wish you'd teach it to me. Then I guess she's right. You are the boogeyman. Kid, look at me. I'm not a monster. Not yet. Cool, thanks, kid. So we don't actually know for sure who that young boy is supposed to be. I speculate that it could be a young J.P. Sater. Some people think it could be a young Murphy. Time at this point doesn't really matter much. There's not, like, sensical things happening in, in terms of time, because the girl is Anne Cunningham. It is Anne herself. That's, that's her as a young girl, and that's confirmed by the comic as well. One of those things that in all of Anne's, well, in several of Anne's flashbacks to her childhood in, uh, in the comic book Anne story, she's drawn exactly like the, the girl looks in this game. Helmet hair and all. And we can actually get some more dialogue with the kid behind the door here. It's a pain in the ass to get it. But there's a way to get some extra stuff. Gotten everything from around here. I can't remember if I can just go back and forth on this side or if I need to go the whole way around. I think I need to go all the way back across the hallway. Hey, where'd you say I can find that rhyme? I can't tell you. It's a secret. See, the voice actor sounds completely different. The audio for this section is, like, unfinished. I can't tell you. It's a secret. And there's a lot of extra dialogue you can get. He actually sounds good. He doesn't sound like he's tranquilized like the rest of his lines. But if you keep going far enough away and then coming back... Hey, I got an idea. How about you teach... 
teach me the rhyme, and then we can... Sounds like a boogeyman trick to me. Are you sure you're not him? Sounds like a boogeyman trick to me. Like the audio is mixed completely different. I swear this is just like unfinished voice lines, but it has subtitles and everything. Let's keep leaving and coming back. You can get a bunch of extra dialogue with him. Is that it? Is that the extent of it? Thought there was more. Try all the way up here. Then going back. The way these old PS2 games looked on CRT, somewhat of an undiscussed aspect of these games, I disagree. We had a very long discussion about it during my Silent Hill 1 in-depth playthrough a couple weeks ago. Hey, I found part of the rhyme. Do you have uh, the whole rhyme? Not yet, but I found it. I found the rhyme. Let me in. See this now the lines like they're they're overlapping and they don't make sense. I haven't found any part of the rhyme, by the way. Just these weird unfinished lines and shit. Sounds like a bogeyman trick to me. Let's try one more time. I think that's the last line of dialogue. When everything starts overlapping and it's all fucked up. I just I just like going through and showing this because one, it's weird as fuck and just out of place. It sounds different. It doesn't seem to work right in correlation to what's going on. And you have to do so much bullshit backtracking to to hear hey, any of it. I found part of the rhyme. Let well, me hear it. I found part of it anyway. Yeah. Just more weird overlapping with that last line. So a lot of people don't ever hear that at all. Like most people when they get to this point, you don't really backtrack there. Try talking to him again. So a lot of people don't even realize that dialogue is there, and it's... I said it's weird. It, it's like unfinished. The kid doesn't even sound the same. I don't want that knife. My gun back. Do it, Murphy. Jump down. Alright, I guess we'll just continue. Hey, kid! So there goes Anne Cunningham. Little child Anne Cunningham. Wait! This scene, just looking out and like the backdrop 
and the the ravens everywhere. It just doesn't feel like we're even looking at a scene from a Silent Hill game. This looks like something out of Resident Evil 4. I want to shoot those birds and see if they drop items. Those birds absolutely have pesetas. It's that part of the game where he yells shit. Shit! Yay, and I clapped. <laughs> I don't even have like a better joke. I don't have the energy to do better humor. Downpour's not putting in any effort. I don't want to put in any, any effort as as well. We're just going to have Murphy yell shit. As he always does. Give me that. this out. Look at this rhyme book. Murphy can tell. That looks like a rhyme book. What do you think, Jesus? It's kind of hard to see the cover from here. Maybe Murphy's just got better eyes than me. But, uh... Church setting. Big old Jesus. Big old fat book. I would assume Bible. I would think Bible. I would put my money on Bible. Not rhyme book. Wouldn't be the first guess. What is this book? March, March. Can I shoot the rope? Does this work? I don't remember if I've tried this before. Well, guess not. You can cut it. If you use a sharp weapon, or you can burn it if you have a lighter. Lighter is an optional weapon, or item. You're not guaranteed to have one at this point. Absolutely skip past him and just not have it. But if you get to this point, you can uh, pick up an, uh, uh, a weapon, cut through the rope, or pick up a lighter. I think if you don't have a lighter by this point, they spawn a lighter somewhere in the room that you can use. Oh 
almost got it. Ashing buttons, QTEs. I'm really feeling immersed. My survival horror game. Can only progress with a lighter. No stuff like axes work. No, axes work just fine. But like, so like I am right now, you can't shoot the rope. And you can get to this point and just have a handgun and a shotgun. Only guns, no melee weapons. Um, so if you do that, and you get to this point, and you don't have a melee weapon to cut the rope, and you don't have a lighter, the game would spawn a lighter somewhere nearby that you could pick up. Or it would spawn a bladed weapon that you can pick up and use to cut the rope. One of the two. But you can use either to, uh, to progress. Poem fragment number one. It was indeed a rhyme book. Murphy was correct. Very Bible-looking book. Had a rhyme in it. Poor little Stephen Skelter, even the chaplain won't forgive you. Forever lies your pleading cries, but Susie knows you felt her. What? <sighs> Two of the pages were torn out. I don't know. Some of these line deliveries, there's times where Murphy's voice actor sounds really good. Like, admittedly, there's a lot of scenes and stuff where character expression and the line delivery, it's good. But then he has ones like that where he's just, it sounds so forced and through his teeth. Dude, the pages are torn out. Like, even David Hayter got past that after, like, one game. Like, why is each verse on a different page? I mean, I guess they're supposed to be... All from, like, one page. They're just ripped apart. Put in different places. Here's a little visual effect that, depending on how you explored this area and how quickly you got through this area, a lot of people didn't necessarily catch. Higher swing. Turns into a body. A little bit more stuff like that would have been neat. It's like the only time they really do anything like that. That it's speed dependent. It's just based on your camera. So, depending on where you stand and move your camera away from it, you can rotate it and change it between the two. Jiggle your booty for me. mentioned something about people who completed this area quickly could see this effect. No, I was saying the opposite. Like, if you don't sit there and rotate your camera and sort of pay attention to that effect, it's very easy to not see it. It's easy to miss it.
Here's the one door in the entire game, and I forgot about it. This is the one door in the entire game where the peak mechanic actually does something. Like, if you do the open door slowly, you can be like, oh, there's a screamer there. I'm not going to go in on that side. You can see that there's like another little short area that you can hop over right here to get in from a different way. It's the one time the entire game where they actually give some sort of purpose to the, the door peak mechanic. Again, stuff that's just kind of thrown into this game and then they don't utilize it in any sort of real meaningful way. It's like, we're going to have a balance mechanic where you got to balance across things to get places like all right what are we going to do with that to make it significant uh just throw it in randomly there's a floor that's gone and you got to balance on a beam the ground's caved away you've got to balance on a tree did i speed run this game i used to uh, I used to speedrun all the Silent Hill games. Still can, just very rusty, very out-of-date routes and stuff. Cutscene percent? Every playthrough of this game is cutscene percent. Downpour does not have skippable cutscenes. Even in the speedrun, you watch the whole story, because you can't skip anything. And there's no major sequence breaks. Flush the toilet. Oh my god, spooky. It's the dirty water goal from Phasmo. Ah, the bogeyman. You won't find yourself, Mur, until you face the truth. And more words of wisdom from Frank Coleridge. You won't find yourself, Murph, until you face the truth. The truth is this game kind of sucks. All right, that's the truth. It has its fans, and I know a lot of people like it. Not a personal attack against you. But man, this game kind of sucks. Like every time something comes up, like we get these little words of wisdom, quote of the day things from Officer Coolridge, and I'm like, I want to say more about it, but there's just not really, not really much there. Because there's so much of the game that's just, depending on the ending or depending on how you perceive different aspects of it, there's not like, there's not like concrete story that you can talk about. Like Silent Hill 2, I can talk about things that happen in the game. Regardless of the ending, I can be like, okay, here's what James did. Here's some interesting things about James's car. The very start of Silent Hill 2. Like, there's there's stuff in the story to talk about and go into detail about and explain. But this, it's so, like, surface level on the stuff that it does give you. Without a whole lot to speculate on. But then... Everything goes into question when you see the endings. And then all sort of speculation goes out the door because you're like, oh, okay, none of it really matters much. Dear Mommy and Daddy, 
please can I come home? It is bad at this place, and I don't like it. I don't want to play this game anymore. I want to go home. The people are mean to me. They hurt me. They say the game is okay. That it looks be okay for the time. That they find the exploration of the town fun. The medicine makes me feel sick all the time. I'm scared. Please come get me. They said the boogeyman's a good villain. Please come get me, Mom. Notice to all staff, in the future, all correspondence for patient blank blank, whether ingoing or outgoing, is to be filtered through my office for my personal review. No exceptions. Thank you. Roberta Bloch, Director of Operations. This is one of those times where there's like, man, I wish there was more stuff to talk about with this information, but it's more general, vague. Like, okay, child at the orphanage, didn't like his medicine, trying to ride home. And they're talking about, you know, different medicines and treatments and things that they were giving him while he was here in the orphanage. Cool, great. Is that Charlie? Is that Murphy? You know... How is it relevant? That's more like it. That's more like it? A gun found on the ground next to a severed human arm? Yeah. That's more like it. They missed an obvious, this should come in handy. Oh my god, if they had done this should come in handy instead of uh, that's more like it when he picked that up. I would immediately take back everything bad I just said about downpour. It would all be worth it. Got a lever. Gun down here. Need to go get that hook on a pole so that we can pull the ladder down. Oh my god, the game is lagging like crazy. Because it does not want me going back and forth between these two areas that have to load independently. Look at it. Oh my god, it's just... Trying to load this area and everything up there. Immediately after loading that area, it just, the game hitches so bad. And this is on Xbox One. It's even worse if you're playing it on, like, PlayStation 3 or on original 360 hardware. This is a nice puzzle. This one's okay. Out of all the puzzles in this game, this one's all right. The theater puzzles, uh, it's interesting. It's not super difficult. It's not exactly like the hardest thing in the world to figure out, but it's at least kind of interesting, it's kind of visually interesting. Is the Xbox roaring? My Xbox One is fine. It's just this game. All right. Add in place. anything past you. Lever in place. Mm. 
and we get the script for Hansel and Gretel. So we need to just follow the script and do all of the things that are called for on this page of the script for the show. So Hansel and Gretel, Act 1. The stage is set, the lights dim, and a haunting melody begins to play. So the lights need to dim. Stage background needs to be set. So stage first, then lights, then a haunting melody. We are transported to the classic tale by the Brothers Grimm. Lights on center stage. Move the spotlight to the center stage. Curtain opens. Hansel, the way home has vanished. See the children are in a dark forest with unknown dangers lurking around every turn. Children enter. Gretel, oh Hansel, the crows have eaten our bread. Hansel, worry not, I will watch over you. They come to a strange house. So, next backdrop. They mean to stay away, but it begins to rain. But then the rain sound effect starts. That's thunder booms and the storm worsens. But then the thunder sound effect. They creep closer to find the house is made of out of goodies. So we just need to be the stagehand. So stage is set. Lights dim. Haunting melody begins to play. Spotlight on center stage. Set number one. the dark forest strange house so then set number two you can hear someone down there clapping and you can hear the um, the oxygen machine actually like whistling and kind of squeezing air back and forth along with that uh, clapping there and someone kind of struggling to breathe while they're hearing it. So that is supposed to be uh, Frank in his wheelchair. Frank Coleridge, Anne's dead father. So next we have Rain. Followed by thunder. As the storm worsens. literally teleported there. The whole theater, the building, everything is just like ripped away. And then we're actually there in the woods with the uh, witch's house. As said, it's not the hardest puzzle. Not the hardest puzzle at all, but visually interesting. I, I like solving it and seeing this sort of world change around you. You liked it in Origins too? Yeah. They really do take this straight from Origins. One of the only decent parts about Origins that I pointed out. Lining up the uh, stage backdrop and the mirror with the prop that was on the stage. I 
Hey, I'm trying to give this game compliments when I can. Oh my god, the game is hitching so fucking hard. Yeah, you're not allowed in here. Now what? That's right. You get away from my house. I remember seeing this the first time and being like, oh my god, no! It's the worst slider puzzle ever made! And then I realized it's not a slider puzzle at all. So it's not quite as bad. Instead, you just gotta flip the tiles, complete the picture. But I had that moment. I had that moment where I was like, no. This is a slider puzzle. I'm going to lose my fucking mind. This does change on uh, puzzle difficulty, depending on if you're playing on easy normal, or <clears throat> easy, normal, or hard puzzle difficulty. It just increases the number of rows for the picture. So since we're on hard, it's uh, six by six. <clears throat> on normal, it's five by five. On easy, it's... 4x4, four four, if I remember correctly. Ah, oh, excuse me. I had to sneeze. My fucking allergies are going crazy on me today. It's just that time of year. Allergies out. This time of year. God, please make the born free stop. Just let it stop. I promise I'll be good. Shit. There we go. All that for a blackboard eraser. Hell yeah, we did it. And a poem fragment. <clears throat> Nowhere left for you to run, every fault laid bare in the open, along with your skin splayed out from within, once the monster has his fun. Yeah, the record scratch sound effect. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, you sexy, sexy ghosts. Get out of my fucking way. And then we step right back out of that reality and into where we were before all that crazy stuff. And just step down off the stage. That that whole segment. That whole segment from the start of the puzzle, to solving it, to the transition of the area, going through the whole area, and then coming back out. Pretty good. 
I wish there was more interesting stuff like that. <clears throat> Wanna go home? God, why is the game hitching so bad? There's just too much going on for the game to handle right now. Blackboard eraser. That was just a misfire before. I'm not going to hurt you. Piece of shit. I'm not going to hurt you. That was just a warning shot. Hey, a Silent Hill artifact. A canvas sack that smells terrible. Be sure to quit out of the game and go all the way back to the title screen menu so that you can go to the extras menu and examine your new sack. Should we do it? Should we go look at the sack? Let's go look at our new sack. Go look at that sack. Back all the way out. Check our game save data. So that we can go to the extras menu. So that we can go to the collectibles. Oh, a sack. A canvas sack. A wet, moldy canvas sack, which smells like it was found at the bottom of a lake. Hell yeah. That was worth stopping the game and going all the way back to the title menu just to look at. An item description that very easily could have been just put in your inventory. Moldy sack, nice. Toy van and the images of a normal car. Yeah, we pointed that out earlier. Hey kid, I'm a computer. Get out of here. I will get you. Wait. I will catch you, even if the console tries to lag.
Shadow Boxer. Yeah, achievement unlocked. We're beating up blow up doll mannequins and getting gamer score for it. Happy Father's Day. Aw, oh, they're doing work on the car. Do you like cars? Me, my own boy. I'm trying to remember my own boy. How dare you blow up mannequin dolls? Interrupting my good memories. They seem to like it. I don't know. Those sounds. Did that mannequin honk at you? Possibly. Magic Eraser. My shotgun is weighing me down, Charlie. Wait for me. Wait for Daddy. Charlie! Wait for Daddy and his shotgun. <laughs> St. Maria's Institute. Preliminary psychological evaluation. A new patient arrived today named blank blank and aged blank. Blank comes to us with a number of interesting psychological characteristics. One, he displays marked in, uh, impairment in the use of a number of nonverbal behaviors, most notably eye contact, facial expression, and body posture. Blank blank shows no interest in participating in simple social play, preferring instead solitary activities. Though Blank maintains adequate speech ability, he shows marked impairment in his ability to initiate and or sustain a conversation with others. Furthermore, Blank engages in the repetitive use of idiosyncratic language, as well as repetitive mannerisms. Blank also has a persistent preoccupation with parts of objects. Further evaluation is required. Respectfully submitted, Chloe Zane. That sounds fine. He just needs normal pills. And he'll be okay. The name blanking gimmick has gone too far. I mean, in this, it's blanked out simply because stuff does not make sense anymore. Because it's like, are they supposed to be referring to Charlie? Are they referring to Murphy when he was a child? We see young Anne Cunningham running around, so... Are, who are we supposed to assume like the young boy is? Is that who we're supposed to assume that these notes are even about? Does any of it actually matter <laughs> towards the overall plot? A 
know we are here to hate, but this episode is more engaging than I thought, in contrast to the water slides. There's at least a little bit more going on, visually and with the story, and like the puzzles, the theater, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, we are not necessarily here just specifically to hate on Downpour. Everyone knows, you know, everyone who watches my streams kind of is a regular here anyway. They already know, like, Downpour is not one of my favorite games. But, uh, I've got a lot of things I dislike about this one. Spooky. DMCA. Plot in this have a connection to the plot of the first Silent Hill games? No. It's totally its own thing. Town functions in a different way. There's no plot points or anything that are references or connected to any of the other Silent Hill games. It is very much its own thing. Nightmare Tornado. Whatever will I do? How will I combat this Nightmare Tornado? Dirty ladies are coming. A dirty lady was here. Just the one, though. Oh. Another one. think the game would be more palatable if it took place in a completely Silent Hill unrelated location. It does take place in, an, in a Silent Hill unrelated location. Like, just because they say that the area is Silent Hill, it doesn't look anything like Silent Hill has ever been, you know, represented. It doesn't look like it in any of the past games. It, it literally is unrelated. Just changing what characters refer to the place as would not change anything substantial about this game. It would still be the same confusing mess that it is. It would still be the, like, poor character acting and developing, character writing. It would still lack motivation on, like, what's driving it forward. Calling it something other than Silent Hill... All that's going to serve to do is, instead of comparing it to Silent Hill games because it's part of the series, it's just going to make you compare it to other horror games in general, which people are already doing anyway. Do you think you'd be able to enjoy the game more if it had no mentions of Silent Hill at all? No, because, again, I, maybe I can try to rephrase my answer but whatever you call it, it is still the same bad game. It doesn't have to be Silent Hill. Calling it something else does not make it more palatable or more enjoyable. It's still what it is. Because that said, it is already not a Silent Hill game. The town doesn't look like Silent Hill. The power of the town doesn't function like Silent Hill. There is no cult. There are no recurring Silent Hill characters in it. It is unrelated to Silent Hill outside of the fact that Konami produced it and said, call it Silent Hill. Taking that title out of it taking away the setting of it and just having people call it something else 
does not change any of the game's flaws. So it doesn't change my opinion of the game whatsoever. Institute, dear Mr. and Mrs. Blank Blank, the purpose of this letter is to offer our sincerest condolences for the tragic loss of your son, May 2nd, during his recent surgical procedure. Despite the best efforts by the attending surgical staff, uh, extenuating medical complications impeded all efforts to revive him. We would also kindly remind you that this surgical procedure was legally authorized in the agreement you signed when your son was first admitted into our facility, so you can't sue us. Regretfully, Chloe Zane. So they're just straight up letting their patients die. Maybe that's the young boy who was just one of the children here, one of the patients here that uh, that died. He's asking us for the rhyme, telling us about the boogeyman. Honestly love checking out Forgotten Memories if you could stream it somehow. You just missed him do that one? No, not Shattered, not Shattered Memories, Real, Real Serenth. Forgotten Memories is a different game altogether. It's made by Psychos Interactive. Uh, it's a mobile game. And the guy who made it and the team that made it are all a bunch of really big Silent Hill fans. So it's very, very Silent Hill inspired. Um, the CEO of Psychos Interactive, the guy who started the project for Forgotten Memories, uh, is a viewer and supporter of the channel, of the stream. So whenever Tato Forever is around, that's the guy who made, uh, Forgotten Memories. And he's been telling me he's gonna make a PC version for years. And I'm like, I'll stream it as soon as you do. And I don't, I still think it's not a thing. I've seen tech demos of it and little glimpses at stuff that he's been working on, but then like, it never ever releases. through. Get some more creepy child voiceover. There it is. any more tummy hurt medicine. Nothing? Oh. From blank blank to blank. Patient's name blank. After numerous attempts, utilizing the latest in experimental treatment conventions, I feel that patient blank has shown no recuperative uh, progress. In fact, I find that Blank has indeed regressed and that any further treatment of this nature, regardless of intensity and or frequency, will be of no help during his strange social disorder. My recommendation is that a full frontal lobotomy be conducted at the soonest opportunity. Sincerely, Chloe Zane. Our treatments aren't working. Just give him a frontal lobotomy. Cut off his his brain. A 
Another bit of a puzzle here. Gotta find a key inside one of these screamers. The idea is to uh, wheel them over into the x-ray machine and see which one the key is inside of. It's randomized every time you play. Go ahead and grab this note. Notice to all staff, please note that the western courtyard door is currently locked. That paper-eating neurotic brat went one step too far and swallowed the key. How in the world does this sort of thing happen so often? Anyway, he's scheduled for a procedure later this week, and I plan to rectify the matter at that time. Until then, please bear with the inconvenience of walking all the goddamn way around just to visit our medical wing. Yep, that's what's that's the most fun part of this area, walking all the goddamn way around. I like the little reference there, how in the world does this sort of thing keep happening? In in regards to like a patient swallowing a key. Because that happens in Origins as well. There's a whole puzzle that you've got to go through following the story of, like, patients in the sanitarium that swallowed keys. in the machine. For the speedrun, you just flat out guess. You just start reaching into him and digging around and hoping you find the key. Puzzles in this game, not good. Not very good for the most part. We just did the one that I feel is probably the best in the whole game. And that's the the theater puzzle. Where you're acting as the stage hand. You've got like the whole transition from the the theater into like the real world. There's our key. Uh, fragment of the rhyme. Poem Fragment 3. Take heed, it's not too late. Mistakes needn't haunt you forever. Though you have regret, you can't just forget. You alone decide your fate. Yo, alien green. It's the rest of the rhyme. Wonder if that kid will let me through the door now. Thank you so much for the 300 biddies. Very much appreciate the support. Thank you. Been lurking today. Love your streams. Thank you so much. Glad you're enjoying them. Enjoying the lurk. And thank you so much for the support. in the desks. Cool. It's just the door then. This right here is some bullshit also. I think you can hear it. 
Yeah, you can just barely hear it. There's a weeping bat up above the door. And there's like no way to avoid getting hit here. Cat Mech, thank you for gifting a sub to Mrs. Aria. Very much appreciate that. Thank you for the support, Mrs. Aria. Enjoy them emotes. Enjoy the sub. Thank you so much, Cat Mech. Thank you, camera. Very good view. Thank you. Look, it's fuck. It's not fuck unless Murphy yells out his name. It's an imposter. It's not the real fuck. Just a generic weeping bat. Where's my son? Where's Charlie? Please, Mr. Pendleton, you don't want to be here. Let one of my officers drive you back to the command center, and we'll call you. Where's my boy? Is he out there? Charlie! 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 wasn't me. I didn't. I mean... <laughs> Wait! Come back! That thing is in there! It's not safe! I... Oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta always keep my mic muted because that series of things happening always makes me laugh. And I'm sure that distracts from people 
watching the cutscene. Does anybody watch the cutscene like super invested in the story of Downpour right now? Because when I see Murphy's face scrunch up when he's yelling, Charlie! It fucking cracks me up. Just the animation is so bad. And the the yell is is somewhat heartfelt. But everything else, like the motion of it is like out of sync. And then the, the face animation doesn't look good. And it gets me laughing. And I start cracking up. And usually I'm laughing at that. And then the scene ends. And it's Murphy talking to the, the little girl, young Anne Cunningham. And she runs off and he's like, you know, wait, come back. And right at the very end of that line, Murphy says, shit. But he says it like dejected and like under his breath. So he's he says all that like, wait, you know, don't go out there, whatever. As, as the little girl's running away. And then he starts running after her and he goes, shit shit and then just that like really softly spoken dejected way that he says it gets me laughing again like this whole scene this whole series of scenes right here just I don't know say what you want about downpour it, it, it'll put a smile on my face even if it's just me laughing it directly at the game that part always gets a smile out of, out of me. Charlie! Shit. Wait. Stop running. It's not safe. Shit. Let me take this holy candle with me. There might be ghosts. Damn it, I'm not gonna hurt you. I won't hurt you, damn it. Just let me follow you with my guns. Why didn't he read the poem from his notes again? Because he's an idiot. We literally went through all the trouble of getting physical pieces of paper listed. Poem Fragment 1, Poem Fragment 2, and Poem, poem Fragment 3. We went through the whole trouble of finding physical pieces of paper with that, that rhyme on it. And then when it comes time to read it, he doesn't take out the journal and read it. And just lets the little kid die, like, right in front of him. Hmm. Take that. Better run. What the hell? It's the Boji Man. Why'd they reuse the Metal Gear Solid 2 soundtrack? It really sounds... I know I know the song you mean. The music does sound weird. It sounds so out of place here.
bogeyman. Alright, I'm mostly taking my time with this, you know, in-depth story playthrough. But I think it's time to show everybody some speed tech. It's time for some speed tech, some speed run technology for completing this game faster. You ready for this? You see how slowly Murphy moves in the water? How he's not able to run full speed? Well, if you step up here onto this bed frame and then drop down off of it... Look at this, running full speed! Let's fucking save a second. Wait, I'm trying to help you. I know, I know. I promise that didn't skip anything. I promise we didn't miss anything major. Even though that was like an enormous sequence break, obviously. It is possible to save one second to upwards of one and a half seconds with clean movement. With this simple bed frame tech. Bye. Shouldn't have trusted the bogeyman bridge. That's my own fault. Huh. Running segment. They haven't made us run away from a giant deadly void in a little while. What a weird concept of a game. No kidding. And there's like lots of acceptable levels of weird when making like a survival horror game, especially a Silent Hill game. But just from, like, a production standpoint, a lot of weird choices made with this one. one? Yeah, this is the one that doesn't work. This one doesn't poke out all the way to hurt you. Oh, and I gotta wait for another cycle on this one. We avoided the deadly spike traps. No voice acting, just <laughs> gestures towards her.
Stop it. I'm letting Bogeyman do all the work for me. I know the audio mixing on the screams and lots of shit in this game is super loud. Oh, he's done. He's leaving. Also, again, gotta point out music. Kind of like, I get that it's different. It's not Akira Yamaoka, and I'm open to different music being in a Silent Hill game. Just felt a little weird, out of place. See the guitar and the piano that comes in there, kind of a little bit better, a little bit closer. Better, closer, warmer. But up to that point, I don't know. We're having this, like, big confrontation with, with the boogeyman, just, like, right there. And it's playing, like, the, the jungle boogie sound from Generations Lost. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, it's Donkey Kong music. Oh yeah, I guess this counts as a puzzle. You, if you can't figure this out, I've seen people play this and not understand what you're doing. It's so simple, a lot of people don't even realize that it's what you're supposed to do, because you just kind of do it normally, but you're just following the, the paintings. You, you'll keep looping the same hallways, going through the wrong doors, until you uh, go through all the doors where there's a picture of the girl running away. They're like brighter and have that direct light sort of in them compared to the other ones. Don't know if that's actually a puzzle, but I've seen people get stuck there. another puzzle that ultimately you can skip if you really just memorize the code because it's one of those ones where it has a set solution it doesn't really randomize and it doesn't change depending on game difficulty or anything like that but I guess for the sake of solving it the way it would be done we'll go solve it MCA. I just like hearing the spooky, distorted Bobby Rick's voice. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Open the curtains so that we can go into Max Payne 2 world. Over the chandelier, which has got a prisoner guy just hanging out, Raven by himself on it for some reason. Here we go, Max Payne 2 World. Because, uh, you know, we've been talking about kind of visuals in this game, how it tries to do symbolism in things without very much uh, subtlety. So here, you step up onto the stage and you just, there's Murphy, there's Napier. It's put into jail. Murphy in the showers. And then the bogeyman. You get it? It's the story thus far. Wash me, Mr. Bogeyman. Can you do a skip here? Not really. Well... The skip here is, I already know what order to ring these bells in. So instead of showing how that's done, how you get the solution, we could just do it right now and move on with the game. But I figure we'll show how it's done. Actually, because I've got the UV light. I wonder if you can kind of cheat this. With the hammer, I thought you could jump on it to skip. It was something that I was trying out a long time ago. Um, when I was routing stuff out for speedrunning this. But nothing that I was ever, like, successful for. Or successful with. I don't think you can point the UV light up there high enough to actually see the symbols. You have to use the uh, chandelier. Because essentially there's the order that you need to ring the bells. It's written up there and you just have to have UV light to see it. Um... So I thought maybe if you've already got the UV flashlight, there'd be some way you could see it just by pointing your flashlight up there. But it's too far up. Because what you're actually supposed to do is come back here, you get some candles... Place him in the chandelier, and then go raise the chandelier back up. I don't want this. Get out of here. And of course, behind the creepy painting is where we find our candles. We can see there's a bit of writing on the walls in here. So if we use our UV light, we can see all the writing deep inside. And there's a fucking blow-up doll ghost coming to kick my ass. Stop. 
stop. I'm trying to kill you. Oh, it's because you're from the other one. Please be patient. I am trying to kill you. Please stop sending your ghost clones after me and beating my ass. So that I can continue to murder you. Alright, now we can go back to reading the creepy pedophile writing. That's pretty much what this is. Deep inside. So innocent. Whole part of the game. Referencing Napier himself. Who raped and murdered Murphy's son, Charlie. Yeah. That's the themes. That's what this fucking game is has given us. Okay. Blue candles. Special candles that emit blue light. Gross. Too much. I agree. See, it's times like that where you really wish this game knew how to do subtlety. I mean, there's lots of times that I've wished that throughout this game. But it's especially true in situations like that. kid murder. I mean, that's the idea. They they wanted to do something very extreme and they they just did it very bluntly, which in its own way can it'll get a response. It's just not it's not very Silent Hill like Silent Hill with like the old games was was all about kind of the subtle aspects where you can show a whole lot. Yeah, everything with Angela in Silent Hill 2, they explain so much about her character, so much about her backstory, and all these really sort of gross details, elements of that, that you sort of get through implication, through the appearance of the abstract daddy, through the way Angela reacts around people, um, through the, the room that you fight Abstract Daddy in. All these little things that build up her story perfectly without having to, like, show you straightforward or say directly what is going on. Whereas this game is just like, this guy's a pedophile and a child murderer. See? Look, here. Here's writing directly referencing it. Here's notes directly just saying it. Here's a cutscene of just a little kid getting his neck snapped and his dead body dropped in front of you. See, it's edgy and right in your face. It's disturbing, so it counts as psychological horror. We're doing a good job, right guys? Oh, and there's the uh, answer for the bells. I, I, Halo of the Sun, Fire... I. So there's the eye, the halo of the sun, and there's the fire. And 
and this solution never changes. Doesn't matter what difficulty you're playing on. Doesn't matter how many times you play. Will always be this. And you get your choice here of how you want to look. You can run directly over here and stand on the stairs if you don't want to get any blood on you. Keep your costume looking nice and clean. Or you can go play around in the blood and get all covered in blood. Make Murphy's hair a beautiful shade of red. Okay, is it time to scream now? It's almost time for some Murphy screaming. Murphy's just always ready to scream. The screams are, are always at the ready for full release. Hey, get away from her! There's little Anne Cunningham, young Anne Cunningham, along with her father, Frank Coleridge what he looked like after he was attacked. He won't let me shoot my gun. won't let me throw my hacks. Don't deny me video game. Is it the whole room? Is the whole room blocked off? What about this room? I can't throw shit in here at all. out here. Can I use my gun here at all? No, it's like my right trigger is just completely disabled for this area. Murphy scream. Time for some more nun talk. Where am I? Why are you doing this to me? Thank you for coming to shepherd your son home, Mr. Pendleton. I know it's difficult losing a child. With all due respect, I don't think you do. And like I already told you, you don't know her there's life. been a mistake. I buried my son years ago. I understand, Mr. Pendleton. We all deal with grief in our own way. Shall we? you'll just sign for your son's body, you can take him home. No! This isn't my son! This thing's a monster, a murderer! Yes, well, I suppose that runs in the family. What the hell are you talking about? Don't you know, child? Have you wandered so far off the path to not even realize who you are? 
What the hell are you talking about? So often the answers are before us, Murphy. If only we allow ourselves to see them. Why are you doing this to me? There were those who dwelt in darkness and in the shadow of death. Prisoners in misery and chains. Because they had rebelled against the word of God. Lord in their trouble. I screwed up, he saved but I didn't them. see any other he way. Them out of darkness you don't know what it was death. like to know it was my fault he was gone. Every you time I God shut my eyes, I saw Charlie's the face, Lord and all I could think was, that monster is still alive, but I'll never get to Amen. see my boy again. Why are you doing this to me? What do you want? What I did to Napier didn't solve anything. Charlie was still gone, and I was stuck in prison. Everything spiraled out of control. It was my fault. I just want... I just want my life back. Revenge is a long, treacherous road, isn't it, Mr. Pendleton? Where do you suppose it ends? Do you get it? Revenge is bad. It's yours, if you want it. You only need to claim him as your own. Bobby Ricks's boat key. Why was that here? Welcome home, Mr. Glory be to God. That effect always looks so bad. The little, like, round dust textures popping up. So there was one little section, one little side quest that I was going to do earlier, just so that I could mention something here. And that is... This is Murphy Pendleton's house. So we see what his house looks like, and we get confirmation that it's his house by going inside of it and seeing it from this angle and similar angles during that uh, theater side quest. <clears throat> you go through all the trouble of getting the projector working and getting all the reels of film, and it lets you play through a little segment where you're going through Murphy's house. It doesn't really play into the story in any other way, other than to verify, like, during <clears throat> during this whole segment, Murphy's remembering, you know, his house. He's feeling like this moment where he was chasing after Charlie was, like, right in his own yard. Even though, supposedly, it would have been further from that. Help me, Danny. I'm almost there, Charlie. Taking my time. I'm stuck on the leaves. Someone dropped a kitchen knife. Charlie! 
You can do it, Charlie. I believe in you. You're doing it. Just keep flailing around. That's exactly how you swim. You're doing great. Just keep your head up above the water. Don't breathe in when you go under the water. See, look at that. You're doing just fine. He needs his water wings? Nah. He's doing great. He hasn't gone under the water and drowned yet. He's doing fine. Doing a good job. Charlie! Charlie! Oh, there he goes. Excuse me, sir. You are not my Charlie. I should warn you, I play a lot of Dead by Daylight. You don't want to do this. I don't even need a pallet. Look at this double back Debbie. Yeah, what do you do? What are you gonna do? Standing right here, what are you gonna do? Flashlight click him. Is there a reason the light around him is making things purple? It's because I have a UV light. If only I could teabag. Tell me. He has to recharge his evil power. Not on my watch. Murphy swings the gigantic cinder block hammer so effortlessly. It reminds me of Origins when Travis Grady picks up the, the butcher's knife. Like it's made out of, like, you killed him. styrofoam. You killed the boogeyman. I sure did, Kieran Culkin. Doesn't matter. They didn't bring you back. Look how the boogeyman's face is quickly flashing, flashing, flashing between Murphy's face and Patrick Napier's face. Because to Murphy, Patrick Napier is the monster. He's the boogeyman. But to Anne Cunningham... Murphy is the monster. Hooray. Symbolism. Corn music starts playing. God, if imagine if there were more corn tracks that were just part of the the game itself and not just the intro boogie man out here having an identity crisis Unless the ending says Murphy killed his son himself, yep. 
or the ending where Murphy's not real and none of these people exist. Or the ending where Anne Cunningham was the prisoner the entire time and Murphy's just one of the guards. They're all viable. That's... I guess to some people that's a good thing. I feel like it's needlessly confusing because it makes it hard for people to agree on any elements of the story for this game. <sighs> Sewer level. Thankfully it's short. It leaves things open for no, no reason. More than leaving things open, it actively goes out of its way to contradict information in the story with some of its endings. back out onto the streets. I came over and showed this ladder off a little while ago just to kind of show like, hey, we're going to be here later. And now it's later. Now we're here. That was like a few hours ago. It's the cops. Cheese it. Trying to take Murphy back to horny jail. After his daring escape. Give me that axe. I always feel like I can fit through there and then I get fat shamed. Which ending do I like the most? God. They're all kind of terrible in their own ways. <laughs> the end of the game. Just the one that makes it end. Any of the ones that end. Yeah, the surprise ending. The joke ending's okay. Pyramid Head shows up and cuts the cake. It was a surprise birthday party the whole time. And Heather's there. And... Oh, Jesus. Like, a bunch of Silent Hill characters are there. And Heather's wearing sleeves for some reason. It's like her exact same outfit. From Silent Hill 3, but... Weirdly and inexplainably, she has sleeves inexplicably if you're gonna go stupid with your endings might as well go all the way and just accept that one is the best yeah you kind of have a point Remember Silent Hill? Remember Drawbridges? Being a part of Silent Hill? Isn't that neat? We're on King Avenue also. And we're getting... We're heading towards Ketchum Street. Obviously a Pokemon reference.
Speaking of references, uh, Silent Hill Origins. Ambrose Shipping. That's Travis Grady's truck. Or at least uh, another truck from the same company. God damn it. But Travis is used to this kind of shit. I'm sure he's fine. He deals with this Silent Hill shit all the time. He's been a truck driver in this area for like 40 years. So I'm sure by now he's just really used to it. So I mentioned earlier there was some side quests that you can go back and do. And at this point, they sort of open it up for you to go back and do stuff. Poor little guy. There's even a bird. Let's look at the grass. Ah, uh, look at that. Grass and flowers. Murphy. Oh, hey. Hi. That's my son, Charlie. Remember when I had a son, Charlie, and he was alive, and we lived out here in this field of grass and flowers? That sure was a nice memory. That sure was a satisfying side quest completed. Yes, I know that's not the end of the quest, but that's literally all you get from it. Charlie likes sunflowers. This is vital information. So at this point in the game, it kind of lets you back out on the streets as if to say, here you go, go finish up all your side quests. You can go and explore the town before uh, continuing on. Because here's the boat. Here's DJ Bobby Ricks's boat. And we've got the boat key now. The boat key, ignition for DJ Ricks's boat. Yeah, it's not telling you explicitly or giving you a whole lot of warning. But once you interact with this boat, you're done. It's a point of no return. Everything in your inventory is about to reset. So imagine you're doing some of the side quests as you play. And you're like, okay, I want to kind of progress the main story a little bit more. Because it'll give me a chance to come back and finish side quests. So you get through the church segment... You get to this point, and you're like, all right, the game lets me go back and backtrack through the, the town and finish up side quests now. So we could run around for a couple of hours and finish a bunch of really annoying side quests, and our reward will be like this little, you know, statue, this cool, unique weapon that's, that's a statue. Uh, and then... You're like, this will be cool. I'll save this really good melee weapon for the rest of the game. And now progress the game again. You get to this point, you get to the boat, your inventory completely resets. Anything that you would go and get right now from any of the side quests wouldn't matter. Wouldn't matter. Let's use this boat key and proceed to the, the last section of downpour, the point of no return that they don't warn you about. Also, remember when Bobby Rick said his boat is fast? Real fast? Look at this fucking speed machine. Look at it go. almost making Murphy's hair have physics. You gotta be kidding me. 
Did you really think it could end like this? After everything you saw back there, everything we've been through, you think going back to prison is all that's at stake here? We're not going to Wayside. What are you saying? Turn the boat around. Are you out of your mind? We're free. When we reach the opposite shore, I'll go one way, you can go the other. It's that easy. We've got unfinished business, you and I. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about, and honestly, I don't care anymore. There is no way in hell I'm going back. It wasn't a request. We've both just been through hell. Haven't you been paying attention? No, you haven't been paying attention. You think this is all an accident, just a big coincidence? This town, it knows me. It showed me things. It wants me to finish this. Don't you understand? It'll never let us go until we finish what we started. What you started. I told you. I'm not going back. You might as well shoot me. Fine. How's it going, Murph? Heard you're gonna be leaving us soon. What do you want, Sewell? You weren't thinking of leaving before you paid back my favor, were you? Napier. <laughs> what am I talking about? Of course you're gonna keep your end of the deal. You're a real stand-up guy, Murphy. Parole report says so right there in black and white. A model prisoner, right? Sure would be awful if they found out about what you did to that child bugger and bastard, though, wouldn't it? I mean, shit. That would ruin everything, wouldn't it? What do you want me to do? What you're good at, of course. Ridding the world of monsters. I got another one for you. Who is it? Don't worry yourself about the details, Cupcake. Just take out the garbage like you did before and we'll be square. When? There's gonna be a little disturbance tonight. The other guards and me are gonna have our hands full, so no one's gonna notice when you head down to the showers and find your guy waiting there, just like last time. And then? Oh, I think you know what comes next. Unless, of course, you're thinking of breaking our deal. And this other guy, he deserves it? Oh, Murph, you have no idea how bad he deserves it. Hell, I only wish I could do it myself. So, what do you say, Cupcake? You gonna play ball? I'll take care of it. Not free enough to play licensed music. Rest in peace, VOD. <sighs> you can see the model and textures like load in. Let me out of here, Frank. Let me out, Frank. You know I didn't do it. Unless maybe I did. I don't fucking know. Can't blame me for this, Frank. I was wish born. Don't worry, I've got a chair to beat things to death with. I'll be fine. Pretty much coming up on the end of the game here. I said that boat, all that is point of no return. You can see 
once you get to this point of the game, everything is just kind of gone. Resets. I'll stick with the chair. What jury on earth would convict you for killing your child's abuser? I mean, that is... That is kind of how the law works. Even in a case where a lot of people would probably understand why he did it, it is still murder. I might be able to cross over on this. So most courts of law are still going to prosecute you for murder. Hold it together. Hold it together better than the fucking metal balance beam sections. So Murphy's seeing flashbacks of his time in prison. The riot that happened in uh, in Ryle State Prison in order to cause a distraction. During the Distraction. Murphy was supposed to go and kill somebody else as his return favor to Officer Sewell for setting up his uh, opportunity to kill Napier. And the person he winds up being arranged to kill for Sewell is... Frank Coleridge. Curious what the guy he's supposed to murder did? So the person that Sewell set him up to kill was Frank Coleridge, the guy that we keep seeing in the wheelchair. Um, and Cunningham's father. The nice prison guard in Murphy's flashbacks. That guy. That's who Sewell... That might come in handy. Is is setting him up to I kill. The damn thing open. Now, whether Murphy actually killed him or attacked him is left up to the ending that you get. And then, either way, Anne Cunningham blames Murphy for what happened to her father. Is this the infamous drunk Hirimi chucks the axe and chair scene? Oh, that was hours ago. That was that was in the uh, in the archives. You don't need these anymore, do you? All right. Insert code. So your clue to open this is behind these boards. It's supposed to be Murphy's prisoner number. And when you cut the boards, it doesn't even matter because Murphy's number is smeared out. But you can clearly see what it is just looking at his back. Um, there's a whole little side quest kind of game you can do here with getting the combination, opening the safe, getting a silver coin that allows you to 
open up some of these extra locks, get some extra shotguns and shotgun ammo. But uh, at this point, it's all optional. And none of it is stuff that we really need to do. Just for some extra weapons. Who needs weapons? I have an axe. And potentially a chair. Stick with the chair. Oh, the radio. I think this is the first time in the whole playthrough that I've actually picked up a radio. That there is a... Uh, a radio that works pretty much like a radio in any other Silent Hill game. You can switch it on, and it'll emit static whenever you're near enemies. But it's totally optional. There's a lot of situations throughout the game that if you see it, you can pick it up. And I just haven't really been going out of my way to pick them up. Until now, anyway. See, now you can hear it going off. Never grasped, grasped the story fully. I've only seen snippets of the gameplay. What's the basic gist? Baby Pie also asked what exactly happened to his son. Sorry if this has been asked before. Sure. We'll just kind of summarize the game. Normally, I don't like doing that at this point in the playthrough after like hours. But this one, kind of explaining the main overall plot that they tell you is, is a little bit easier to summarize. It's, once you discuss all the endings or non-endings, try to make sense of it all is where a lot of the discussion comes from. But essentially, you're playing as Murphy Pendleton, this guy here. He's a prisoner. Um, his son, Charlie, was kidnapped, raped, and killed by a man named Patrick Napier. Murphy got himself arrested in order to get sent to the same prison as Patrick Napier so that he could have his revenge. So that he could kill Patrick Napier for killing his son. Once Murphy's in prison, he gets the opportunity to kill Patrick Napier through the help of a corrupted security guard named Sewell in exchange for killing somebody else at Sewell's request, on top of killing Napier. So Murphy kills Napier, and Sewell sets up for him to kill somebody else, and that somebody winds up being another prison guard by the name of Frank Coleridge. And Frank Coleridge is the father of the female corrections officer who's been chasing us, Anne Cunningham. So Anne Cunningham blames Murphy for the death of her father. She is seeking revenge on Murphy. Murphy blamed Patrick Napier for the death of his son and was seeking revenge on him. Where did they get this? He didn't even say the line. He'll say it when we close the journal, I think. It's weird that the subtitle went. Uh, but yeah, there we go. That's kind of the, the general recap of the story thus far. As I said, the story kind of falls apart here at the end because the ending can completely change whether any of that actually happened or whether any of those characters are the same characters. It's nonsensical at that point. That's the general idea of, I think, what the game is trying to tell you as far as its plot goes. 
Murphy, forgiveness? You have the balls to ask me for forgiveness. How can I possibly forgive you when you've destroyed everything I had left in this world? Every time I look at you, all I can see is his face. I only ever asked one thing of you, and that was to be a good father to our son. You failed me, Murphy. You failed me, and you failed Charlie, and now there's no way we'll ever have him back. Don't call me. Don't write. I never want to see you again. Carol. So Murphy's marriage fell apart with his wife, Carol, Charlie's mother. So after Charlie's death, Murphy felt like he just kind of lost everything. Carol. So that's why all he wanted Where was they get this? revenge at that point. That's all he wanted anymore. Yeah, first mention of uh, his wife directly on that note. Um, but not the first one in general. All the way back in the archives, you find the note for couples therapy after the loss of a child. Which, you, you know, imply Murphy being part of a couple. That Charlie wasn't, like, adopted or, you know, we didn't know anything about the, the mother directly up until then, but we at least knew there was a, a mother. Oh yeah, that's true. You do hear a little bit of her voice. I'll be right with you, chair. Need this to break a lock. This door must be open from somewhere else. Control room this way. him. I like that you don't actually have to fight that guy. You can just get that extra little scene there if you lure him into the electric wire. Was Murphy linked to the son's kidnap, or was the wife's note just a parental rage? In the context of everything in the story as it is presented, it's just she's angry. She's angry that she lost her son, and she blames Murphy. Um, Murphy wasn't directly involved. But there is an ending of the game where Murphy is directly involved, where he is the one who killed his son, he's the one, you know, who killed others, like... It was all him, and he's being put to death for it. So, this game doesn't really have, like, a proper canon ending or canonical ending or anything like that. It's just the story just plays off into a bunch of weird directions when it comes to the game's endings. So it's hard to make sense of a lot of plot points in the game because of that. Raka. for no reason loud for the sake of loud nothing scary about it it just hurts my ears
or loud. Do not cross that line. Don't you even think about crossing that line. I'm going to do it. Crossing the line. Guards can pass their sidearms through that window. What you going to do about it? So all it'll do is force the door shut. So that you're not able to get through. Unless you walk through the metal detector without any of your items. So you just drop everything here. Hey, Chrisomir. Happy birthday. Overlook Penitentiary, the Prison of No Return. By Paul Grimm. In operation for more than 50 years, Overlook Penitentiary has garnered a reputation as a place where prisoners are sent to never be seen or heard from again. That's not all. <clears throat> Overlook has also been rumored for decades to be haunted. Strange disembodied voices, ghost-like apparitions, gruesome deaths, and unexplained disappearances. The inventory of peculiar happenings that have been reported over the years by both prison staff and inmates is disturbingly prolific, some might say. Others, however, claim this is nothing more than legends born out of an environment that is conductive to terrifying tales. No question about it, Warden Stephen Creviston told us. This can be an extremely sc uh, scary place. We've got society's worst of the worst locked up here, many of them clinically insane. It's just a matter of time until crazy stories flow out of our prison, regardless of how impossibly horrifying they may sound. Despite his doubts about the paranormal aspects of Overlook, Creviston does admit that some portions of the prison's notorious reputation are not wholly undeserved. Over the years, there have been numerous reports... Oh, excuse me, of strange deaths within Overlook's foreboding walls, and even more bizarre disappearances. And although a number of these incidents remained unsolved, oh, my brain's melting, I can't read anymore, Creviston maintains that the vast majority of the disappearances are easily explained. Easily explained. Prisoners just go missing all the time, it's not ghosts. Because we treat them poorly and then they die. I mean, maybe it's ghosts. That weird fucking <laughs> distorted item pickup noise when you pick up a lot of things all at once. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Fucking finally. Get through. Keep all of our shit. Totally forget all your items right there. Oh, absolutely.
It's one of the barbed wire Halo of the Sun things that those torso enemy things are mounted on. Sort of like sitting there in the corner of a room doing nothing. Fire axe, I'll take that. time you read this, I will be gone. I wasn't sent here with a life sentence, but this is what it's come to. The days here are eternal, relentless. Each new sunrise brings endless boredom and monotony. Each new sunset pain and fear. I have done my time, and I no longer wish to be here. But I found a way out. Soon I will be dead, but I am finally free. I'm coming, baby. I'm coming, baby. See, just the note in the cell with the noose. You get the idea. You understand. I get it. Why do we have to also have the little sound effect and shadow puppet thing happen? This feels like one step too far. And they have another noose asset just right over here. Do you get it? It's so miserable. The prisoners don't fucking want to live anymore. The hell? I don't want that. there. Oh, I don't have UV light. Right, because it's going to give me the UV light here for this puzzle. So this is another one of those... Damn, I'm going to need the code. Yeah, another one of those key code combinations that doesn't actually change. So if you already know it, like I do, you can just plug it in right there. So I'll go ahead and show how you're supposed to get it. This is another one of those puzzles that I've seen people get stuck on when doing like first playthroughs on Twitch and stuff like that. Oh no, torso. What have they done to you? feel like that statement describes this game. They went one step too far. It ruins all sense of context and atmosphere when they just shove it in your face. Yeah. Yeah, it describes a lot of aspects of this game. Is, you know, they did something that was almost kind of okay. And then... Just one step too far. A little bit too much. Oh, you've got a vague and somewhat mysterious plot. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, and your endings make no sense and all contradict each other. Mm, well, it was kind of working and then one step too far. Oh, you've got decent visual atmosphere and you can do some interesting things with the consoles and the hardware that you're releasing it on. And oh, you know, it's a torso squirting blood. Babe, don't got much time to write today. Just want you to know everything's worked out. By the time you read this, I'll be on my way. I'm finally going to be free of this shithole and all these bastards. It's almost done, babe. And then me and you can be together again like we always wanted. Almost. Love forever. R. Bad news, bud. What 
So this number right here, looking up at the ceiling while you've got the UV on. So many people miss this when trying to uh, figure out the solution to this puzzle. Because essentially all you're doing is going through, tracing the steps, and finding where each of the numbers for the keypad are hidden. There's another two. Work release program application. Participation in the work release program requires compliance, basic eligibility rules, and rules for participation at all times. For any violation of these rules, an offender otherwise eligible for work release may be denied entry into or continued participation in the program. Murphy, this might be good for you. What do you think? Frank. You never stopped trying to help me, did you, Frank? Yep. Frank was just a good guy like that. He's trying to get Murphy out early. Oh no, now the noise has started. All right. Well, once the noise starts, just turn everything on. So, for the password so far, we've got two. Nothing on these. We have this two. Three. There's four. Lastly, this one can also be kind of weird to see. Five. So you go through all the fucking noise and sound of this whole area. Not to mention infinitely spawning enemies while you're trying to get through all this. So you go through the prison workshop all just to get a code. That is two, two, three, four, five. Just mostly sequential numbers. Fucking love it. that quarter dollar. Undo these screws. Luckily, it works. Also, time to mash. Mash A to crawl.
That fucking slap. If you fail the crawling simulator, is there a unique death scene? Or just an up-close look at Murphy's booty? Um, We could find out. Because I was thinking about it while I was doing it, and I decided not to do it. But you know what? Let's go back and see what it is anyway. I remember it not being entertaining but I don't remember exactly what. I can't remember how far back I need to go here. Okay, perfect. I mean, it is an animation. He gets dragged away, but that's still kind of lame. It was something. It, it, he didn't just ragdoll. He didn't just turn red and ragdoll. Or the camera just pans away to nothing. Don't you do it. Don't you do it, sir. <laughs> Stay back. That's my purse. I don't know you. I'm out of bullets. Excuse me. Let me pick up my axe. Quit wiggling. I just realized the animation for that door changes if you kill all of them. Normally it'll open up just a little bit, very, very slowly, so that you can do the, like, squeeze through animation and get away from them. If they're all dead, the doors just, like, fly open. Silent Hill, Overlook Penitentiary, executes innocent man. Internal investigation underway. Federal intervention expected. The penitentiary was not properly vetting people before they were executed. 
Oh no. Sir, as you know, I have been a corrections officer at Ryle State Prison for nearly 20 years. During my tenure, I have been witness to questionable behavior by my fellow guards, but never to the degree that I have observed over the last six months. Most notably, the gross misconduct that I have witnessed by corrections officer George Sewell deserves immediate attention. CO Sewell has been engaged in a number of reprehensible activities, including drug trafficking, blackmail, coercion, and violence against prisoners. As a longtime veteran of the prison guard staff, I refuse to turn a blind eye to his transgressions. Please accept this letter as an official request to open an internal investigation of C.O. Sewell and any other guards who may be aiding him in these illegal acts. I'm willing to formally submit my testimony in writing and or in person to the investigative committee. Respectfully, Frank Coleridge. Coleridge, he knew that Sewell was up to no good, and that's why Sewell wanted uh, Coleridge killed. That's why he was hoping Murphy would be the one to do it. Uh, Deus Ex, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Very much appreciate it. Congrats on the all-nighter. Oh yeah, we're still going. Uh, we just hit the 12-hour mark, yeah. Thank you so much for the support. DMCA, stop it. Give me the battle axe. We learned a thing, yay. Oh, uh, if only there were more things. If only there were more things to like learn and observe and discuss and talk about. But at this point of the game, we've kind of explained the overall plot multiple times through and summarized everything up to this point. <laughs> Why is there a battle axe there? Just your standard prison issue battle axe. Ah! Fuck. <laughs> it's just there for emergencies. <laughs> Pretty normal thing. Have the murder scene. We just have to go around and investigate each of the uh, marked evidence spots. Evidence one a pool of blood in the prison showers. Evidence 2, prison shank inside the sink. Murphy's like, oh, I'm keeping this. A handmade weapon, a handmade weapon sharpened to perfection. Weaponed? Sorry, at this point my brain is just melting. A morning badge. This was the same badge that Murphy had earlier. That belonged to uh, Frank Coleridge. That Anne was questioning him why he had it. And a bag of crime evidence. A black leather glove stained with How's blood. How's it going, Murph? Heard you're going to be leaving us soon. You weren't thinking of leaving before you paid back my favor, were you? Hey, who's there? Now we're getting flashbacks to Sewell, showing this uh, crime scene in the shower. So it's Murphy just sort of like reliving 
those elements of the murder. Just having to relive the riot. Basically, everything leading up to Frank Coleridge's attack. It's time to run from Red Void, everyone's favorite segment of the game. You can't outrun yourself. So what exactly is the Red Void supposed to be? There's lots of ways you could interpret it. Some people think that it is Murphy's own guilt pursuing him. Some people say that it's supposed to represent Anne Cunningham pursuing him. Some people speculate that it is supposed to be Murphy is not real and that he's wish born from the mind of Anne Cunningham and that that is Anne Cunningham's mind trying to erase him. <laughs> That's me. That is Dr. Grimm. He thinks that. And honestly, it's a totally fine theory. It's just as good as anything else you could theorize from this just sort of like mess of a story. I can't even be mad about it. I can't even be like, that's dumb. Because, no, this whole game is dumb. And that's absolutely viable. As, as, you know, just as much as any other theory. Personally, I think the Red Void is just... They remembered Silent Hill 3. They were like, hey, everybody remembers Borley's Haunted Mansion in Silent Hill 3. We did running segments for Shattered Memories. Let's make running segments that are like Silent Hill 3. I think that's about it. Cadillacs come back, it's fine. We don't need Battleaxe where we're going. More like machines, thank you so much for the resub. Very much appreciate that. Thank you, thank you.
power's been out all morning, so missed a lot. That's okay, it's just downpour. It's a lot of wandering around the streets and feeling very unsatisfied with exploration. I guess this is kind of like this game's nowhere. It's just Murphy's weird otherworld memory version of the prison. But kind of mashed up with some other things. I like how you can see the fucking thing just drop directly down. Look at that crazy skybox. Pixelated rushing gray clouds. H.R. Geiger in the design. It's definitely got some tubes and alien shapes. I'll give it that. It's also got textures that look like they're out of Valheim. goes all my stuff. Goodbye, shotgun. As a fan of Geiger work, this is not it. It's like the cheaper dollar store knockoff HR Geiger. Value Geiger. Geiger. Turn it back, turn it back.
That's right, you ugly bastards. Back off! Oh, did he manage to walk out? You fucker. I keep getting stuck. We did it. We solved the Zelda puzzle. We trapped the two enemies in cages. But now we can flip the world upside down and go push a button. Do you get it? Do you understand? It's symbolic and very deep. It might take me a long while to kind of explain it for people who haven't been watching for the last 12 hours, so I'll try to sum it up. Murphy was in prison. And now the monsters are imprisoned too. At the hands of Murphy. Oh, what a twist on it. monsters in society's prison I mean clearly that's that's the implication from this very distinct visual obviously the big draining blood water scalpel wheel tubes represent that very clearly god damn it to Orange World. They don't like light. It's almost like that's a solution to the puzzle that isn't really a puzzle that you have to do here. You can use the uh, spotlights to chase away the prisoners. Or also you can pick up something and just beat them to death. the whole spotlight idea. Just fight your way to victory. Have I played Alan Wake? I have, many times. Uh, I streamed it a couple times as well in the past. Take a crowbar.
We'll see if I can get lucky. It's possible to open this door without having to kill any of these enemies, but it's uh, pretty difficult. You have to get really lucky with a few things, including the enemy AI. need him to keep whiffing and then have the spotlight turn on and chase him away. AI. Fuck off, AI. Oh my god, it was so close. It was like one turn away. Oh, he's gonna fuck it up. Yeah. When they walk up to you, like that directly. It's like, oh, you're just gonna hit me right away and be a fucker. enemy designs. You gotta love tattooed prison guys with things on their faces. The condemned criminal origins rejects. for more running. Running segments. Everyone loves the running segments. Do more of them. Run from the red void. But also get grabbed by prisoners if you get too close to them. Murphy screaming. fucking zooming. the glitched out hey we got the glitched out guillotine there's supposed to be guillotines dropping during that that last part of the run there sometimes they bug out and you can just run straight away without having to stop for them hey scales of justice Time to solve the puzzle. And the puzzle is very simple. It is literally just put the evidence in the thing. Oh, 
all the evidence that you picked up from the crime scene earlier. Just put it in the thing. No thought. No riddle. No solving. And, uh, final boss time. This is Frank Coleridge. All that's left of him. The wheel man. This monster's okay. Frank... Monster Frank is, is, like, probably one of the only decent-looking things in the game. As far as enemies and stuff go. He's a big, gross, creepy wheelchair monster. I'll give him that. And this is the whole fight, after all that. After everything else, we get to this final boss, and it's just, uh... Shine the light in the face, unplug the cable. Rinse and repeat. Not, yeah, you don't even really get boss music. It's just kind of the continuation of the stage music. Yeah, the wheel monsters just popping out of the room just to get shot in the face and squeal and then run away. Take that. Light in your eye socket. Just running along. I like how you can control him during the cutscene. And he's just running there like, don't mind me. Ooh. Ouch, you shot me. Having a big giant boss doesn't really feel like it fits Silent Hill. I think you can make it work. God at the end of Silent Hill 3 is fine. Samael is pretty big at the end of Silent Hill 1. I guess not this scale. Um, True Walter at the end of Silent Hill 4. The giant True Walter thing. I don't know. It's it's just the way you go about fighting it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel very good. 
um, enjoy the ending. There's a tiny little bit of game left. How could you? And then I'll load up a save and he show another good ending. Man. A good man. What the hell are you talking about? That thing tried to kill me. It's not a man, it's a monster. No. No, that's not how it was supposed to go. That's not what I agreed to. Murphy? Is that you? Officer Coleridge? Jeez, I'm glad it's just you. This thing is kicking off something fierce. I knew you'd be smart enough to steer clear of it. What are you doing here? Sewell told me to meet him here. You haven't seen him, have you? He ain't answering his radio. Are you okay, Murph? You don't look so good. What's that you got there? What the hell's going on, Murphy? No. This isn't what I agreed to. What are you talking about? Ag agreed to what? Tell him, Murph. What's going on here, Sewell? Why didn't you answer the radio? Should have learned to keep your big fucking mouth shut, Frank. Now my friend Murphy's got to shut it for you. Murphy, don't, don't do this. Come on, Murphy, you gonna keep your end of the bargain or not? <laughs> do it, Murphy. you son of a bitch! No. No. You know, he was a great man, my dad. Didn't matter who you were, family, friends, even prisoners. He treated everyone with respect. Always looking for the positive side of people. I wanted to be just like him. <sighs> You don't understand. Your father treated me like one of his own. I never... He didn't die right away, you know. After you were done beating the life out of him, he spent years in that wheelchair. A... a fucking vegetable. Did you know that? And I had to watch this. This wonderful man. Shit and piss all over himself. Day after day after day. And every time I looked at him, you know what I saw? Listen to me. I, I saw a monster. I saw you. Just calm down a minute, and let me tell you what really happened. You don't know how many strings I had to pull to get your transfer approved, to get you to my prison. The favors I had to call in, the sick things I had to do to get you under my watch. You don't have to do this. My father was a good man. He didn't believe in revenge, but I do. Oh, whatever. You've shot me so many times already. Now I'm the boogeyman. Go fuck yourself, Anne Cunningham. I have the big hammer of smash. You will never survive. So now we get to make a choice and we literally are going to reload this save and see multiple other endings that you get just from changing your choices right here at the very end. Um, so we're going to make one of these options, either spare her or kill her. We'll watch that ending. We'll reload the save. We'll make the other choice, whatever we don't pick now. We'll come back, we'll spare her or kill her. Reload the save, come back again. And that time, instead of absolutely destroying her with the hammer, we'll let her kill us. And get another ending. So for now, I guess let's just go through. We'll spare her.
No. I won't do it. Yeah, I thought you might say that. No! Jesus, you're pathetic. What about Napier? The guy kills your boy. You go through all the trouble of getting yourself locked up with him, and what happens? I serve him to you like a fucking Christmas goose, and you can't even finish the job. No, I gotta go in there and finish the bastard off for you. I ask for one little favor in return. Murphy, run! And this is the thanks I get! Oh, Frank! Put your hands where I can see them. You son of a... I'm not gonna tell you again. Sewell here, we got an officer down. 10 double zero, C block, shower level, over. You can't do this. I didn't. Whose prints do you think are on that ship? 10-4, backup's on its way, sit tight. Roger that. Should have just kept your end of the deal, Murph. Cop killers don't last too long in here. I'm sorry, Frank. I'm sorry, Frank. It wasn't you. It was my fault he died. Pendleton. I'm so sorry. I forgive you. this are we free yeah i think we are all units respond Lyle prison doc bus involved in a tc fatalities eastbound 73 fire and rescue en route i should go i guess you better wait where are you going there's some place I gotta be. What does that mean? Murphy, wait. Where are you going to be? You still Thank stole you. a police car. For what? You still haven't finished the serving truth. your sentence for the crime you actually did commit. I know you hugged and everything, but... There's a system of law in place that you're circumventing right now that'll also get Anne in a lot of trouble. Yeah, come on. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, motherfucker. back here so soon, sweetheart. Can't get enough of the place. <laughs> the hell's this? You used to work with my father, Frank Coleridge. Yeah? So? We need to talk. Woohoo. Also, this is considered canon. If you want to go by the comic book, that's the ending that they go with in the comic book, is the revenge ending. Where Anne, the whole point of this entire experience is revenge is bad. And, uh, hey, achievement unlocked. Revenge is bad. And, uh, Anne learns nothing in that ending. Although it's much more satisfying out of all the endings. Except there's still a ton of shit that doesn't make any sense. Anne doesn't learn anything and still just presumably gets her revenge. We don't actually know what she does to Sewell there, but presumably she kills him? That's why she has the gun, right?
And also, Murphy has been going through Silent Hill being tormented by all of this stuff because he never killed anyone. And Sewell was the only one who killed any anybody. I hate you. Okay, Anakin, calm down. We can talk about this. Get away from me! I'll kill you, you bastard! That's what I'm hoping you'll do. Actually, no. We still have one more ending based on a choice I can make after knocking you on your ass. I changed my mind. Come here. You'll pay for what you did. <laughs> what was that sound? What was that sound she made? <laughs> Did she do that last time? Not like because I killed her so quickly in the doorway. I don't think she did. All right. This time we kill her. Wish. Assembled here to witness the state's execution of Murphy Pendleton, sentenced for the murder of his seven-year-old son. We get to see his wife. The couple had divorced four years earlier, and prosecutors believe Pendleton drowned his son Charlie in retaliation for his ex-wife seeking sole custody. More recently, Pendleton was tried and convicted for the murder of decorated officer Frank Coleridge during a Ryle State prison riot, which expedited Pendleton's execution sentence amidst public furor. This is it, Pendleton. Any last words? Yeah, I'll see you in hell. Cupcake. So there's that ending, where Murphy killed everyone, and doesn't really care. He's just... making fun of Sewell, right at the very end. But we get to see his wife, I guess. We get to see Carol. But everything that we heard in the story earlier, when Murphy was all like, I'd never kill a kid, I couldn't live with myself, blah blah blah. And then at the end, he just, he did it. He killed them. He didn't care. Apparently that didn't matter. He was just lying to J.P. Sater. That's why it's hard to talk about this game and its story. Once you get to these endings and you're like trying to piece it together. Now... We'll let uh, Anne kill us. You'll pay for what you did. I hate you. I hate you. 
I hate you too. But you should have been the main character of this video game. You'll pay for this what is you your did. story, Anne. You got done dirty by just getting the comic book. You really should have had the game. You'll pay for what you did. Get away from me! Hurt me more, Snake. My harem of beef, boys. We have the harem. We have the beef. Try harder. Shoot more. Shoot more bullets faster. It'll help. Feel bad for my crimes, and I am allowing you revenge. Just do it. Just shoot more bullets. You, sir, please punch me in the butt. Punch me in the butt more. It'll help. And more bullets. You, more butt punching. Because you're not doing enough damage. Oh, 37%? Come on. There you go. Get it. Do it. Harder. I mean, what? <laughs> you know that... You know that scene in Kung Pao? Where, uh... The guys with the sticks are all beating up on Chosen One? Just imagining those sound effects. There we go. Did I wake you, Cunningham? Come on. Rise and shine. You know the drill. What? Where am I? What's going on? Guess today's the big day, huh? Tell you the truth, I'm sort of sorry to see you go. Prisoner secure. Open 302B. Transfer. Yeah, who's getting on the bus now? Yeah, so that's Silent Hill Downpour. See what I mean about the story? And then, like, the story's somewhat okay, but it leaves a lot of things sort of vague and sort of open, and you're hoping for, like, a conclusion at the end. And then you get one of those endings, or another couple of endings you can potentially get that aren't better or the surprise ending 
Who cares? There's corn. At least Jonathan Davis, anyway. The soul of corn. Sorry. Yes. That Silent Hill downpour. We're already going to get DMCA'd so hard for just playing this game. We already let it play once during the intro. All this Daniel leaked music gets flagged on YouTube all the time. It'll probably get flagged on Twitch now too and just get muted. So hopefully there will be a VOD and an archive for people to watch. It's possible uh, we'll still have that opportunity. Not too much of it will be muted. Um, I'm going to be honest. This game, it's one that I think about in my head as not being so bad. Especially after having not played it and taken a break from, like, all Silent Hill games for the last year and a half or so. Um, playing through this again, the first, like, hour or so in my mind, I was like, this isn't so bad. And then when I realized I've got, like, 12 more hours of it to really go through, Revenge is a I'm just like, ugh. It's gonna slog on. It's gonna turn into those parts where I've got nothing to really say, nothing to really do, and nothing to really talk about. I'm just kind of running around the town with like boring copy pasted buildings with copy pasted interiors and no feedback from Murphy as to like anything that I'm looking at, and no real satisfaction from doing any side quests. And the music and stuff is just forgettable and lacking. The monster design is just pathetic for the most part. So, it does have some interesting elements in its story. The endings fuck it all up. If it would have been a little bit well, more well thought out. If it would have included all of the perspective for Man Cunningham, instead of that being a separate comic book. It could have been much better, but... Man... Replaying this one and, and getting through it reminded me why it's so low on my list. Um, yeah, it's just, it's dry. It's really dry and boring to kind of sit through, and it's really nonsensical, and it's not fun to talk about. It's not fun to even discuss, I feel, compared to a lot of the other ones, because the other ones have so many elements that, you know you can sort of discuss and overall agree on and then have more vague ideas that you can like discuss and kind of talk about how you interpret things but there's enough core story to like the original four Silent Hill games and enough things left mystery that you can talk about the core story itself but then go off and sort of talk about these smaller aspects of that overall story um, that are left more vague and left up to interpretation. Like, we can sit and talk about what there was a hole here, it's gone now means in Silent Hill 2 for hours, um, and it won't change the fundamental understanding of, like, what events happened during Silent Hill 2. Um, whereas with Downpour... There's a lot of really interesting theories and stuff that came up that chat was talking about during the playthrough. I'm sorry if I sounded, like, kind of annoyed or frustrated, like, bringing a lot of that stuff up. Because I'm really not. Like, everything that anybody was bringing up, it's totally viable with this game. The, the endings are all over the place. The story tone is all over the place. It doesn't really do anything to make you, um... I guess, like, appreciate any core story elements from it. It's just kind of all there. Kind of all there. Take it or leave it. And, uh... They're just like, yeah, here. Interpret it how you want. Make sense of it. Whatever you want. None of it really matters. Sad. Could have been a lot better. 
could have been could have been a much better experience but that is it that is silent hill downpour for better or worse um i might do some of the side games sometime this week or next week probably going to be a little bit of a break from silent hill now for a while uh just a few days at the very least i'm going to be playing a lot of dead by daylight i might be back on later tonight um I'll definitely be back on tomorrow. The Resident Evil chapter for Dead by Daylight is out, or coming out today. Um, so I'm going to be playing a lot of DVD again. And uh, grinding out all the new chapter stuff. Getting used to the new map, getting used to the new killer. Leveling up the new survivors, all the Resident Evil chapter stuff. Uh, so I'll expect a lot of DVD in the coming uh, weeks. But still some Silent Hill stuff planned here and there. I want to revisit some of the story playthroughs and redo some of the story playthroughs and include some other things. Show some different endings for like the first four games. Um, do all the joke endings. Maybe a couple endings from some of the Western games. I still want to do some speed running. I'll probably be doing like Silent Hill 3 and Silent Hill Homecoming. Eventually I'll pick back up on speed running all the games in the series again. But... I'll probably start with three or homecoming because those are like my favorites to run. So expect some some speed runs, maybe some challenge runs, some revisits, some revisits on story and lore stuff. Uh, maybe a day of side games. I might do some uh, PT and uh, the arcade game and some stuff like that. I will not be playing Book of Memories because fuck that game. But other things, other Silent Hill related things, I still have a lot planned. And then we'll still be doing uh, some Dead by Daylight and uh, probably some other games in between. Maybe some Phasmophobia. Yeah, Phasmo in the plans. There was just uh, some new updates on uh, Phasmophobia. So I'll probably be playing a lot of that with friends and uh, maybe even just playing through solo as well. So Phasmo streams, DVD streams, some Silent Hill speed running and uh, other stuff like that. As always, no schedule. Follow the channel if you're not already to uh, get a notification whenever I'm going live. You can also follow me on Twitter, just at NubZombie, if you want to keep up with my streams. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for being here, for joining me through this. A lot of you have been here. I've seen so many names who were here going throughout like all the games these past few weeks um, and doing these super long in-depth streams and I see a lot of people here for most of them like beginning to end for all eight main games that we've gone through now at this point so thank you guys so much for enjoying what I do being out here and supporting me and letting me do this uh, especially after how many years I've been doing this on Twitch it's an incredibly uh, lucky thing so, I, I appreciate all of you for making that possible for me. And yeah, um, let me find somebody to go and host. And um, that's going to be it for me. My boy Starwin is doing some Silent Hill 2 new game, any difficulty runs. Starwin is an absolute legend in the Silent Hill community. He's very knowledgeable on the games and he's an incredible speedrunner for most of the Silent Hill series and many, many other things. Uh... So definitely go and check out Starwin. He's grinding out some Silent Hill 2, doing some speedruns. Really, really interesting game. If you've never seen the speedrun route, there's a lot of crazy stuff for Silent Hill 2. Um, so go and check him out. Starwin's one of the best. Definitely show some love. Drop him a follow, and I'll see you all next time. Have a great one. Thank you all for watching. Peace.